I hear all the time people accuse us, you know, you guys are praying so loud. You know, God, you know, is not deaf. Why you guys pray so loud? I heard the story of a little boy and his sister. They got dropped off at grandma's house. And in the evening, the little boy was saying his prayers. And he was praying exceptionally loud. And his little sister hit him and says, dude, why are you screaming? God is not dead. God is not deaf. And the little boy says, he's not, but grandma is. <laughs> And sometimes we pray for other people to hear us, hoping that they will help us with whatever we're going through. But our goal is to pray that we will be heard in heaven, that God will hear us. And when God hears us, everything will change. When God hears us, miracles happen. When God hears us, He responds and He gives us answers. Amen. This morning, I want to speak to you a message entitled, Revival After the Storm. A revival after the storm. I want to share with you three famous storms in the Bible that all of you probably have heard or are aware of people who went through a storm but they came out of the storm and they went into a revival and they went into something glorious and they went into something marvelous. And my goal is not to educate you on the history of the Bible and my goal is not even to help you to know Jonah, Apostle Paul or Peter better. My goal is to help us to take the Word of God and to make it applicable in our everyday life. In Jesus name. Amen. And so before, before we start, can you just say this prayer out loud after me? Say, Oh Holy Spirit, open my heart to your Word. Oh Holy Spirit, open my heart to your faith and oh Holy Spirit open my heart to your truth. Amen. Amen. I am not going to read a particular scripture. The first storm is the storm that we're all famous and familiar with. It's the storm that Jonah, the guy in the whale went through and in Jonah chapter 1 it says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah and it told him to go to Nineveh and to preach that great is their wickedness against God. And Jonah being a prophet, instead of going to Nineveh, which was not an Israelite country, which was a country that actually oppressed them at that time. So Jonah was kind of like the, didn't really like those people. He was, you know, a little bit racist against those people. He didn't like them because they were oppressing them. And instead of going to preach, I mean, if I would be Jonah, I would go to Nineveh because the message God gave Jonah was actually not a good one. The message was like, go tell them they're going to die. Like, yes! If you don't like those people, I mean, go and preach that. But he knew, ah, if I preach the message, he knew these people will repent. And if they repent, God's going to forgive them. And he did not want to see that. And so instead of going to Nineveh to preach the gospel, the Bible says Jonah goes on orbits.com and he gets a ticket to a somewhere completely opposite than Nineveh. And he goes into a ship and goes way on the bottom so in case somebody there needs Jesus he doesn't have to tell him about Jesus. He locks himself in the room and he knocks himself out. He sleeps and the Bible says the storm. The interesting part the scripture says and the Lord caused the storm. The first storm that can happen in our life is the one that God brings into your life not to punish you but to bring you back into his will. Jonah went to a storm caused by God because Jonah was outside of the will of God. Now we sometimes think of Jonah, well Jonah sinned, but what was his sin? Did Jonah go decide to cheat on his wife? No. Did Jonah decide to finally you know get a lot of booze and you know and make himself happy, break bad? That wasn't the case. Did Jonah just you know decided to go kill the president? No. Jonah's sin was very unique sin because it wasn't anything morally corrupt. It was anything that would hurt other people. It was simply running away from the will of God. And when he would run from the will of God, he was actually, the Bible says, running from the presence of the Lord. When we run from God's will, we run from God's protection. When we run from God's will, we run for God's, from God's power and we eventually run from God's revival. 
there are times when God calls you to witness to people. There are times when God calls you to serve Him. And you're not necessarily doing anything bad with your life, but what you are doing inside, you know it's not the will of God. And now your friends look at you and say, you're good. You go to church. Your yard looks clean. You even wash your car, your car and you feed your dogs and your cats. You are green. You know, everything is good. You love mother nature. Everything is fine. Everybody looks at you and you are an example. But you know when you are running from the will of God. And God brings a storm. Why? Not to get back at you, but to get you back to His will. Hell breaks loose. When you are out of the will of God, God will use the storm. Not to say, huh, you think to run away from me? Watch me, man. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you what I can do. I'm going to make you suffer. No, God doesn't do that. God brings the storm not to get back at you. Not to prove to say, huh, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you more. You're going to suffer. God doesn't do that. God brings the storm to get us back to his will. Sometimes a Christian gets busy with his cares and his duties and they forget the will of God and God will bring shaking to get him back into the center of God's will. Sometimes the church will get busy with politics. The church will get busy with charity. The church will get busy with the community or we get busy with the social club. Kumbaya my Lord, kumbaya my Lord. Sometimes the church simply gets into the routine of religion and we, we just become an aquarium for the Christians instead of going and fishing for the people. And we just simply, you know, pat my bag, I pat your bag. And that's not the will of God for church. God's will for us is not to maintain a nice religion. God's will for us is to bring other people to Jesus Christ. And when that happens, when we don't do the will of God, God will cause scandals. God will cause shaking. Sometimes they will start to lose money. Attacks will come. And one simple reason, not to punish the church, but to bring the church back to the center of His will, which is to win souls, make disciples, and to see the power of God move through them. And somebody say, Amen. Guys, God wants us to be in the center of His will. When we are not in the center of God's will, we are not in the protection of God. And when we have the storm, it's not caused by the devil. It might be caused by God Himself. Not to kill us or drown us, but to bring us back in the center of God's will. Sometimes the will of God is very hard for us. At least that's what we think. Sometimes the will of God is something that we are not willing to pray, pay the price for. Like Jonah, we are afraid to witness to people. We are afraid to talk to strangers about Jesus. And sometimes we are afraid to talk our fr to our friends about Jesus. And sometimes we don't want to. We're like, hell wouldn't hurt from, from those people. You might not like those people. Like Jonah. You're like, you know what, I wish that they would go to that place. Like Jonah, you might not like him, but you must understand God loves them. And because God, because God loves them, you have to swallow your pride and swallow your hurt and say, you know what, I'm going to do the will of God. Amen? Maybe you don't want to see them in church. You're like, I want them to come to church, but not my church. Because they will steal all the attention. And because people will attend to them whatever your reasons are you must understand that in the will of God is where you are safe and without the will of God you are not safe you will have a storm and Jonah finally decided to go to the will of God and the most amazing part Jonah saw revival of a whole city give to God their heart revival for the whole city you know how powerful this was that even Jesus did not have that kind of revival. He talked about Jonah and he said Jonah came never did one miracle and the whole city gave their lives to Jesus and Jesus says and I did so many miracles and he says you stubborn stiff-necked people you still don't want to give your life to God. Even Jesus did not have that revival that Jonah had. Why? 
because he swallowed up his pride and chose to go into the will of God even when it was not comfortable. God will use a storm to get us to revival. Let's not wait for the storm for us to pray for the souls. Don't wait for something bad to happen for you to start really seeking the will of God and the purpose of God. Your God is so good and so loving. He will use the storm if it needs to be to get you to his will because that's what revival is. Revival is when cities give their lives to God. It's possible if a madman like Jonah preached a crazy message, no salvation, no hope, can bring a whole city to God who didn't even knew nothing about God and there was no Facebook, there was no YouTube, he did not have a live stream and he did not get on CNN or Fox News. He didn't have a newsletter called Jonah Association where he spread to every neighborhood. No, Jonah went on the streets and screamed on the top of his lungs, people repent or you will die and something happened. Instead of being killed for that message, people believed that message, declared three days of fasting and the whole city, they even made their cows fast. I mean, you know that's a revival. When your cat has to fast. When you look at your dog and you say, you know, homie, we're fasting and you're going to die too if God doesn't move, okay? So you're fasting too. That's a revival. When people fast, when people see God's face and you know what God did? God gave mercy to the city. God wants to bring revival to our city and sometimes for that really to happen we have to be in God's will and for us to be in God's will my friends sometimes if we're not in the will of God God will shake things up it might start with a flat tire it might start with being laid off sometimes it could even start with just bad things started to happen and you look you're like man where is God and then you simply come to God and when you quiet down and God says good now you can listen get back to my will get back to my purpose and the moment we start going to the will of God the storm subsides and the storm stops this storm did not stop because Jonah sprayed the anointing water this storm did not stop because Jonah got out and says I rebuke every spirit behind this storm he wasn't rebuking the devil this was God trying to get Jonah's attention this was God saying, Jonah, if you get into my will, I will bring a revival and the storm will stop. God cares for the people as much as he cares for us. And we must understand as Christians and as a church, the will of God is where our safety is. And the will of God is where God's presence is. The will of God is where revival is. And without God's will, people will perish. And honestly, the storm will take us. The second storm that happened in the Bible was when Jesus was in a storm and that storm is mentioned in book of Mark chapter 4 verse 35 and the Bible says that Jesus tells his disciples let's get to the other side and let's he didn't doesn't actually tell them what's going to happen on the other side but disciples obey Jesus and they get into the boat and Jesus goes to sleep now Jesus wasn't going to sleep because he was running from the will of God. He was going to sleep because he was in the will of God. So we see the difference. Jonah is running from the will of God and Jesus is running in the will of God and both are sleeping. One is sleeping because he's trying to get away from God's call and the other one is sleeping because he is hiding in God's call. And Jesus is sleeping and the Bible says a storm breaks out. Now this storm wasn't caused by God because this storm was trying to kill them and Jesus is sleeping and Jesus gets awakened but the interesting part it never says Jesus got awakened by the storm. Jesus got awakened by disciples. Disciples woke him up and Jesus wakes up from his sleep and he looks at the storm and he doesn't pray for God to calm the storm he rebukes the storm it lets us know that this storm was not caused by God it was it was caused by the enemy who wanted to destroy them we need to understand a few simple things when we are in the will of God the enemy could stir could stir things up to stop us from doing what God wants us to do when we started to when we start to declare when we start to pray when we start to fast when we start to say the church is for revival we want to see healings the enemy will bring a storm to stop us 
so that we will not get to the other side so we will not see revival so that we will not see the glory of God because any revival means a nightmare in hell every any revival means Satan's business going bankrupt our revival and the church gets bigger the nightclubs get smaller when the glory of God comes in the church the shame of Satan comes into the world Satan becomes defeated and he knows he smells revival from two miles away disciples over there you know they have no idea where they're going devil knows because devil sees a demon possessed man on the island and Jesus is going there two plus two is four Jesus demon possessed man guess what's gonna happen demons will leave and devil sees that and disciples don't see nothing and sometimes we have to understand devil doesn't attack us at where we're at he attacks us at where we are going and sometimes we don't know where we're headed we're over here praying fasting believing all of this stuff but we do not know we are going somewhere and sometimes the devil knows that and the proof that he knows you are headed somewhere is he brings a storm to stop you from where you're going Turn to your neighbor says we're headed somewhere. We are headed somewhere. Amen. And that somewhere is revival. Can somebody say amen? amen? Now in this revival the city did not get saved. Only one person got saved. Only one person. All this waste. All this hardship just for one person. The history says actually this one person who was delivered from a legion of demons stayed in that city he went to evangelize to 10 cities they were, they were like really close to each other and years years later they still found a church in that region that was founded because of this man's testimony revival is not just when a city gets saved a revival is when a person gets saved and spreads the message of gospel in the place that he is in the devil will fight us he will try to discourage us he will bring bad testimonies well look what happened you prayed for this person guess what happened well this person came to the prayer line and look, look what happened to him well you know since I've been coming to church it seems like hell is breaking loose everything was fine yeah it was fine because you were on devil's payroll and now you came an enemy what do you think devil's just gonna sit and let you slide of course hell is gonna break loose because now you're not his slave you are his enemy you should expect war you are a warrior and we must understand is when hell breaks loose satan doesn't fight us for where we are coming from he fights us for where we are headed when the babies are being slaughtered male babies in egypt why do you think pharaoh was doing that because he smelled miles away that a male child is going to be born and he will shake the foundations of Egyptian kingdom into the ashes. When Herod killed 14,000 babies in his life, in, his, in that time, he smelled the king was born. What, what can a baby do? Nothing. But when the baby grows up, there's nothing the baby cannot do. And that's why the enemy is not going to fight you for where you are at. You will look back and you say, I don't have nothing. Why? Leave me alone. But see, he knows where your boat is headed. He looked at your GPS and he sees where God is taking you, even if you don't know where God is taking you. God is taking you to a revival. God is taking you to salvation of souls. And rise up and know that the devil knows your plan. You should know your plan too. God has a big plan for your life and he's going to use you for his glory. Can somebody say amen? When the storm is breaking crazy, Jesus is sleeping and then he gets up. He stops the storm. In this storm you must understand. Listen very carefully. In this storm you must understand. When Satan is breaking crazy, you have to learn that sometimes God will calm you first before he calms the storm. If you cannot sleep in it, you will never be able to stop it. If in your head is panic. Now it's one thing if it's in your pocket, it's crazy. In the family it's crazy. You walk in and it's like World War III just broke out. Plates flying, knives flying. I mean, I mean, that's the only weapons that you have. Forks flying, everything is flying, doors are broken. I mean, literally, you're like, you want to see hell come to my house. That's exactly what's happening. 
and things are just really bad you know debt collectors are knocking on the door and things are just chaotic people are calling from school your child is crazy take him out put him in a mental institution he's driving us nuts and you're like oh my goodness and then after a while what's happening in your house gets into this and then when you talk to your friends and they're like oh my goodness hell is in you too it's not just in your house you you think hellish thoughts you're you, you're crazy and they're just and you start vomiting you know like called vomiting when you start spilling your beans spilling everything and people are like oh my goodness you you're a mess you're a wreck and what we think is this God clean the house first and God comes and God starts to deal with your head you're like Lord don't deal with my head remember one thing if you cannot sleep in a storm you will never have the power to stop it you can only give what you have if inside of you there is no peace you cannot give peace into your house if inside of you do not let your storm get inside of you because once it gets inside of you you will get up and be like disciples say oh Jesus we're dying do you think storm will stop because of that no storm will kill you you have to be like Jesus says disciples come down come down everything's fine don't interrupt my nap by the way he gets up and the Bible says he looks at the storm and he says peace be still why could he speak peace he lived in peace he slept in peace he said how can you sleep and when it's a hell breaking loose Jesus did peace is not absence of conflict it's the presence of a prince of peace whose name is Jesus Christ you can have no money to pay your rent you can have every part of your body hurting and then let your head hit the pillow close your eyes and sleep like a baby not because everything is fine but because it is well with your soul the Prince of Peace lives inside when we come against the devil but we have storm inside of us the devil will laugh at us and the first thing the Lord wants us to do is when we come to church is so that he wants to get the storm out of us and put his peace in us and when his peace is in us then when we can say to our problem peace be still then we can be like Jesus says be quiet don't let the storm take your peace give your storm your peace and it will be silenced speak to the storm like Jesus did but you can't speak if you don't learn to sleep in it sleep in it you say let the Lord work to victory but meanwhile say you know what I am not going to be worried I am not going to be stressed out I am not going to be pulling my hair and I am not going to be in panic I am going to be in the center of God's will I'm going to stand against the devil but I will not let the devil put a storm inside of me can somebody say amen and Jesus overcomes the storm storm quiets down they come to the island and guess what happens a person gets delivered from demons a whole scene is changed before our prayer lines the devil knows during these prayer lines demons will be tormented usually two three days before the prayer line he will bring a storm against us not just the people who are praying but everybody and this is what we have to remember especially a week before the prayer line you have to be in the peace of God sometimes it's not going to be anything physical that are bad happening sometimes it's just emotionally you just feel down you just feel drowned you just feel empty especially before something great is about to happen you are going to feel fatigue you are going to feel exhaustion doubt and overwhelming sense of panic and stress and that point you have to learn to know first of all that's an indication something is about to happen not bad something good is about to happen you have to keep your peace and then you speak your peace that means don't speak bad speak good you look at your children you look at your house you look at your car if it doesn't want to start lay your hand on the engine and the other hand on the transmission and you say you know what even if you don't start I love you God loves you everything is good and demons are not going to live in that engine in Jesus mighty name amen you speak peace to every single thing you may say that's gibberish oh no it's not gibberish because when things are bad and you look at your wife and you call her with names God forbid that's exactly who she's gonna be speak peace when you are under attack storm will subside 
and the victory will be ours for the glory of God because somebody say amen the first storm caused by God to get back into the will of God the second second storm is caused by Satan to stop us from the will of God the third storm and the third storm is recorded in Acts chapter 27 and we're going to bring this message to the conclusion Acts chapter 27 this is Apostle Paul in the storm Apostle Paul is in the storm and he tells the captain we shouldn't travel now because there is a big weather problem happening just like right now on the white path on the pass I just got an alert right after worship that there's a big alert you have to take chains on your cars if you're gonna go to Seattle really big you know snowstorm few people who's supposed to be here today actually didn't make it because of that that's exactly what happened in this story there is an alert Paul is aware of it something really bad is gonna happen and Paul tells the captain we should not travel right now we should stay back I know we want to get to Rome fast but let's, let's relax bro let's stay back the captain says no you're a prisoner you shouldn't be telling me what to do I went to school for this okay shut up and he puts Paul aside and he doesn't listen to Paul well like Paul said that's exactly what happened the storm breaks loose and the Bible says this the ship begins to be tossed and broken and Paul at night God comes to Paul and tells Paul hey Paul there's about 200 people here on this ship and I'm, I'm giving them to you as a gift. Paul's like, thanks God. He's a prisoner. Remember, Paul's a prisoner. Paul is not like a mayor. They're not driving a, a big <laughs> high guy. He's a prisoner. He's, a, he's like, he's nobody. And God comes to him and says, hey, all those 200 people, they're yours. Th this is a gift for you. Just wanted to bless you with it. So they're going to be all saved because of you. Paul says, thanks God. And then Paul comes and something happens. These guys did not eat for 14 days. And Paul says, hey guys, let's, let's all start eating. He breaks the food for everybody, looks at the captain, he says, even you, you shouldn't eat because you didn't listen to me, but well, you eat too. Everybody, let's eat. And then he gives them advice on how to do certain things. And he says, the ship is going to be lost. God says, ship will be lost, but we will not be lost. This is how we should go about it. One person jump out, one person do this, hold on to the plates and surf your way to the island. Everything's going to be fine. What do you do? When a storm came against you and you're rebuking it, rebuking it, rebuking it, but it seems like it's not stopping. I've met people like that. I've talked to people, even in our church, who are rebuking, standing in faith. And they say things like these, it's not working. I have a message for you today. When it seems like storm is not subsiding, trust in God. But meanwhile, get a surfing board and surf. Surf. Surf in your storm. Jesus was in the greatest storm when he was about to be betrayed on the last day hell broke loose he took a towel took a basin and started washing people's feet one of his disciples betrays him the other disciples takes a knife and cuts another person's ear off you know how bad this is Peter is gonna get prosecuted after Jesus dies and get locked up in jail and Jesus has a plan to put Peter as a pastor how can you have a pastor in a church who's in jail so Jesus looks at Peter he says dude I'm planning to put you a pastor and you cut person's ear off you know who you cut person's ear off they're gonna prosecute you they will put you in jail for this and he looks at the poor guy who came to arrest him and you will think this is a time where you know things are so hectic and just simply say to that man you know what bro I'm so sorry you're not one of my people and number two my healing ministry is done you guys are killing me so no healing today okay I'm sorry your ear is not that bad you go fix it yourself Jesus takes his ear off and puts the ear back and looks at Peter and says, Peter, this is just so you don't, don't go to jail and this is so you can go home with the perfect ear. You think this is bad? Jesus goes to the cross. They put him on the cross and the Bible says that while on the cross, he looks at his mom and it dawns on him. Who's going to take care of her? Because historians say Joseph died already. 
and Jesus was the first and he takes care of his mom he makes the arrangements make sure his mom is well taken care of right on the cross oh and then he looks at one guy who curses him he says well you're going to hell looks at the other man and he looks at him and says Jesus he sees in his eyes he wants to be saved I mean this is the moment like you know what I don't witness today look at what happened to me I'm not doing witnessing I'm not telling people about Jesus I'm not telling people about God I'm going to hell. I'm going I'm dying sometimes we're going through something difficult and somebody comes on the streets you know and you know God is leading you to bring them to salvation you're like man if you would know what I'm going through you wouldn't want to hear from me but this is the moment you can bring somebody to Christ when your storm is not stopping don't stop serving and you think it would end there it doesn't Pharisees are mocking him laughing at him and he says just before I leave I wanted to serve you too and he tells them I forgive you he serves them and then he dies and rises from the dead serve through your storm serve in your storm I find people who think because they don't have a job they shouldn't give there are people who say because I'm sick I shouldn't pray for sick people not realizing first time word healing is mentioned in the Bible wasn't Abraham was commanded by God to pray for a Philistine king and Abraham was told to pray for women who were barren can you imagine Abraham started a healing ministry praying for barren women his wife was barren at home and people could have said to him Abraham how dare you pray for other women to be healed when your own wife you can heal her but Abraham was not like us Abraham says okay God told me to pray Abraham goes and prays for other women and God heals the women and comes back home and his wife cannot give birth to kids when your storm is prolonged don't stop serving and God heals Abraham's wife I heard of one man who lost his job at winter had a very high paying job came home but he didn't tell his kids he lost the job he told his wife I lost my job I got laid off my company decided to um, cut back on the budget the next morning he got dressed left exactly at eight o'clock in the morning as he always did to go to work but he had no work and instead of going around the streets and crying it was winter he walked by the neighbor's house and he saw a lot of snow on the driveway he knocked on the door he says I'm without a job I need something to do so I don't go crazy do you mind if I shove your snow she says yeah it's fine with me and he's like I'll do it for free I don't need money from you he says, I just need something to do he shoves the snow the lady saw how hard he was working she decided to give him a few bucks he says well thank you but I just wanted to give you as a gift went to another house did the same thing and by the time he finished his eight hours he came back home almost frozen but he came back with come back home with a few hundred bucks he's like well this is not that bad he comes and goes back next day instead of wallowing up you know eating chips and potatoes and watching soap opera and crying big tears that things are so bad the government's bad my boss is bad he just decided to go and serve and as he served next day he brought some more money in two months he started a company to help people shove the snow and today he's a multi-millionaire how did it start it started with the man who got in us in a storm but in a storm he decided to serve he decided to serve and God turned that around same thing happened with our brother Joseph Joseph goes into prison and instead of like Samson who went into same kind of prison and going into circles see Samson went into prison because he ran with lust Joseph went into prison because he ran from lust and Joseph instead of going in circles in prison Joseph became in charge of the prison Joseph started a prison ministry he woke up every morning and sees one person is not happy he says hey how are you doing why are you not happy you want me to tell you a joke you want me to cheer you up he says no I had a bad dream tell me the dream and the man tells him a dream and Joseph at that moment remembers God gave me a dream that I will be in charge of a my brothers but look what happened to me and at that moment Joseph could have said you know what bro I think you ate too much pizza yesterday forget about your dream but Joseph says no 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 he says your dream means God is gonna do this and that how could you tell him that God is gonna fulfill his dream when your own dream is not being fulfilled but Joseph realized when you are in pain don't stop serving 
little did Joseph know the man he helped with the dream will become the man who will fill his own dream fulfill his own dream and Joseph helped the man two years later a few years later the man calls Joseph he says hey Pharaoh wants to see you and the rest is history surf through your storm we were in Mexico a few months ago and um, there were people on uh, surfing boards boards and I definitely saw right away they had no idea what they were doing but they were waiting for waves see they couldn't surf in a quiet sea they had to wait for waves and the moment a big wave would come instead of praying for the wave to die they would actually try to uh, put themselves on the surfboard and try to surf through the wave and so many times they failed so many times they tried and they failed and they tried again and they fell they fell but they would keep getting up and once they 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 mastered that art it became wonderful even through the waves they learned to surf when you're going through storm and it seems like you're rebuking the devil you're coming against the enemy and, and it seems like things are being prolonged find somebody who has a problem and solve it find somebody who has no job and help them to find it find somebody who has no shoes and buy him shoes find somebody who has no phone and buy them a phone find somebody who needs somebody to babysit their kids for a weekend and babysit their kids find somebody who needs to rake their leaves because their back is hurting and go rake their leaves find somebody who is in need find somebody who needs Jesus Christ who's going through hell and just simply encourage them find somebody that you can serve in the middle of your storm and you will realize your storm actually will bring glory to God and it will end faster than you think amen if we all wait until our life gets good and everything gets perfect and then we're gonna witness and then we're gonna tell people about Jesus and then we're gonna help other people my friend that day might never come but it's when we start serving that many times our storm subsides and God receives the glory I know it's hard to serve when you're in pain it's hard to love when you've been hurt it's hard to give when you don't have enough it's hard to forgive when you've been betrayed. I know it's hard to welcome people into your life when maybe something happened before that wasn't so pleasant but we have to follow the steps of our Jesus and we recognize we will see revival on the other side and we can surf into our revival through serving in the middle of our storm. It happened with others, it can happen with us. Smith Wigglesworth who in his ministry has raised more than 30 something people from the dead for later part of his years they said he had kidney stones and his kidney stones were so bad that sometimes he would be standing on a stage in excruciating pain unbearable pain and he preached about healing prayed for the sick seeing dead people raised like one particular case a woman came, or a man came with an enlarged heart he he has kidney stones he's bleeding he's he's suffering and the person came with an enlarged heart and God tells him he was very controversial in his day God tells him to punch him in the inner in their heart so he does that he punches the person in the heart and the person dies right on the stage and Smith Wickersworth he was brutal this actually happened he picks up that person puts him to the wall and tells him walk well, the person is dead so they, they collapsed he got angry he picked them up he says you're not listening to me this I'm telling you walk well the person is dead they collapsed again he got more angry he got so angry he says you're not hearing me right he picks him up one more time stacks him the dead person whom he just killed on the stage to the wall and then the third time the person opened their eyes started to walk he went back this person went back to the examination and they had a baby heart this person ministered healing and resurrection of the dead while having kidney stones there came a time God healed him of his kidney stones but he said this he says I never stopped helping others in the middle of my pain I know people will say don't preach to others about Jesus. Save your own children first. Well, if you're gonna take care of other children, God's gonna take care of yours. Never stop serving in the midst of your pain. Never stop serving in the middle of your storm. Can somebody say amen?